Good evening, class. In the first face-to-face -face meeting of EDAS 6210, we briefly discussed Bowman and Deal's four frames, which includes the structural frame, the human resource frame, the political frame, and the symbolic frame. Uh, tonight, we are going to focus on one of those frames, and that's the structural frame. Just as a refresher, uh, organizations, regardless of whether it's a school, uh, a district, uh, a club at a university, a church, a business, or whatever, all of these vary in terms of their heterogeneity, how complex and large they are, how adaptable they are to changing policy environments and situations, uh, how well developed they are, and the level of resources that they receive or are able to attain to achieve their ends. Another way that schools vary is in terms of their bureaucracy and structures. As an example, think of a, of a school. Uh, a school may have a principal only. Uh, a school may have a principal and maybe an assistant principal. Another school may have a principal, an assistant principal, and a dean, all of which have roles that they play in making that school work. And of course, there's also the teachers and the support staff that are a part of that organization. How many of you have ever heard uh, phrases such as, well, I'm just a cog in the machine, or I'm the low man on the totem pole? Uh, well, these are all uh, ways of describing an organization as a factory or a machine. Uh, so the structural frame emphasizes goals and objectives. It also emphasizes specialized roles for the people that are part of that organization. I mentioned principals and assistant principals, and teachers and support staff earlier each has a specialized role that they play to make that school operate. There are formal relationships, who is the boss, who answers to who, and so on. Uh, there's a focus on data, and the data are used to be able to determine whether you are me meeting goals and objectives. Uh, there's a logic, and there's structure to who answers to whom, uh, and who is responsible for what in the operations of the schools. Another uh, key element of the structural frame are plans and policies. In the structural frame, uh, in achieving goals, the uh, efforts are put into structuring tasks, technologies, and environments, and resources of being able to attain those goals. Strategic planning plays a huge role in making sure that you achieve those objectives and coordinating the resources that you have. Decision making is characterized as a rational sequence that produces a decision. Communication tends to focus on the transmission of facts and information. For example, a uh, memo that comes down from the principal to teachers or a memo that comes down to the principals and to the teachers of a school from the superintendent or the school board. This is the uh, formal structural uh, communications that are part of the structural frame. Leaders play the role as, of an analyst and architect under the structural frame. In discussing the structural nature of schools, Hoy and Miss Gale state, the structure of the school organization is basically bureaucratic with authoritarian trappings. Hence, the school milieu comprises a number of countervailing forces. One hopes that administrators and teachers alike will strive to make school organizations more professional and less authoritarian. So let's be clear here. Pretty much any organization that you can think of, and this certainly includes schools, have a hierarchical structure to some extent. Granted, some are flatter than others, uh, but there is a hierarchy in these organizations, in schools in particular. Now, there's positives and negatives of hierarchies, divisions of labor, and the characteristics of organizational structure. For example, the loosely coupled versus the tightly coupled school. Uh, organizations are different, and the trick for administrators uh, is finding that balance between too much order and too much chaos. Finding that balance is an ongoing affair that changes as the organization's membership changes uh, and also with the external forces. And this could be policies that are coming down from the state level or from the federal level or even from the district level to the schools within that district. Uh, remember that schools are open syst systems and they're subject to the whims of policymakers, parents, uh, socio-demographic changes in the community and the economy as a whole for the state and for the local community and for the nation. So let's connect the structural frame to something that you're going to have to do as part of this class and that's the final paper. Remember that 
all students should analyze the principal's responses to uh, interview questions and any other available data, such as observations that you make at the school site, uh, what you see at a school website or a district website, and certainly uh, performance data from Ohio Department of Education. Uh, and use Bowman and Deal's four frames as a theoretical framework to try to understand that school site. And this certainly includes uh, the structural frame. Remember that the structural frame uh, and things that you could be looking for in examining a school site would be things such as rules and regulations, the goals that the school has, policies that are in effect, the roles that people play within the organization, the tasks that they do, uh, job descriptions, the chain of command, uh, standard operating procedures, uh, the span of control, uh, information systems, and management processes. So these are the things that you should be looking for as you interview a school leader and as you delve deeper into that school environment uh, that you are studying. Uh, you will be looking at uh, for structural aspects in a lot of different sources of data, uh, the school website, uh, the ODE's uh, report card on the school, and the district website as, as well. So keep these in mind as you continue to explore a school site and as you, uh, as you start to get ready to interview a principal of a school setting. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me by email or by phone, and I will uh, seek to answer your questions. Uh, I hope everything's going well. I'll talk to you later.